What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. So, OCG Limit Regulation List, aka Forbidden and Limited List for the OCG, aka also the Ban List for the OCG, just got posted. This should be their October 1st list because OCG, of course, is on set dates. I believe the set dates are what? October 1st, July 1st, April 1st, and January 1st, I believe are the exact dates that they get their Forbidden and Limited List. Uh, usually this comes out Sunday, like really early on in the morning for at least Eastern Standard Time, um, maybe like 9 a.m. It's already been posted on Sundays, but this time I believe that it came out on Monday. I was at work when the ban list got posted, so you know I wasn't able to post it immediately. Anyways, I'm going to cover it. A lot of movement here, not so much when it comes to the forbidden cards, but a lot of movement when it comes to the limited section. OCG, they did a lot, including unbanning some cards that I did not predict but you know some cards that i've definitely wanted to see come off the fnl list some stuff that i'd be very excited about if it does translate to the tcg and then some other things that yeah, you know can maybe signaling some stuff so anyways let's go ahead and look at it only card ban beatrice uh, lady of the eternal uh this one was probably predictable i actually saw some ocg players predicting this on their last ban list i mean it, whether it be tcg ocg master duel whatever uh, master duel doesn't have um they don't have the fiendsmith engine yet but this card is basically on borrowed time all of these cards that send directly to the graveyard especially if they are extra deck monsters whether it be curious lavala chain they're just all on borrowed time because that is an effect that just keeps getting more and more powerful in Yu-Gi-Oh. You can make an argument. You could have banned this card during tier format, sending those uh, Ishizu Millers to the graveyard. But with the you know advent and the rise of rank sixes, by the way, of the Fiendsmith, this card was just way too crazy. Now, maybe you could argue for like Appaloosa, but I think Appaloosa isn't quite as prominent in the OCG as it is like or as it was in the TCG. So that's why I'm thinking... They did not ban Bar um, uh, not Baron de Flor, excuse me, but Appaloosa. But to me, it's like Appaloosa is another card that even in EOC, just like kind of on borrowed time. It's only a matter of time before she gets banned. This was interesting. And you, if you know me, you know I am all about this. Zodiac Dryden's returning for um let's see we banned this card once uh and then yeah we banned this in broad bull i believe at the same time and then we unbanned this card and then <laughs> did we banned it again for a second time randomly i am such a fan of zodiac dryden now um i think that barrage is still banned though like real talk i, I 100 would like to see dryden back at three but i also want to see barrage legal as well I could even maybe be talked into Broad Bull to like one, but no higher than one. But then again, maybe extra deck space becomes an issue at that point. But I'm definitely happy to see Dryden uh, be unbanned. Uh, the second banning of Dryden was definitely not warranted at all. Um... I don't think Zodiac would be that good, especially without Barrage. They definitely need Barrage. But I am super excited about this card. Masterpiece, the true Draco Sling King is back. Um, MBT famously said, I think maybe like a couple of years ago, that as insane as Masterpiece is and as, you know, as, as much horror that this card induces on the players because, you know, people got Masterpiece trauma. This card technically is just a weaker version in a lot of cases of Dragoon, like, you know, Red-Eyes Dark Dragoon. So I think it's fine to have a masterpiece. You also have to consider, think, you know, a card like Skill Drain is limited in all factors of Yu-Gi-Oh, even the TCG. So, you know, a lot of the floodgates aren't as prominent. But I will say this, Card of Demise is at three in the OCG. So I think people will mess around with this. I don't know what diagram is at i feel like it's at one everywhere and um I, i've really wanted this card to come off if this card comes off in the tcg and we get like three card demise i'm probably gonna be playing true draco <laughs> uh, speaking of dragoon we also have red eyes dark dragoon coming off the list in the ocg as well as snatch steel we've had this card which actually is a little just a lot of a lot of bandless ping pong because these are two cards um, Zodiac Dryden and then Snatch Steel. These cards have been banned, unbanned, banned, unbanned. They've they've done a little bit of ping ponging. But uh, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. If you don't know the history of this card in the OCG, it was just an absolute nightmare. It terrorized the game. I did an entire history video on this card, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that when the OCG got this card, 
it was before Rise of the Duelist. So they did not have Talents. They didn't have Droplet, Ice Dragon's Prison, um, the Dogmatic of Florida Lee. The only outset they had in the entire game to Dragoon was basically Super Poly and Kaijus. Like, other than that, once Dragoon hit the field, it was just GG no re. The card just absolutely ravaged them. But we know from the TCG, Dragoon is really not that big of a deal. It, it's a powerful card. It, it's still a busted card on, like, face value, but... It's a, it's a card that, like, most people would be fine with. To the other cards that are already in the game that are getting hit, we have um, Black Witch. I, I think... Now, don't quote me on this, but I think the Wanted poster also is not at three. But you can make an argument that this sort of also happened before. And people would probably argue that this probably should have happened in the TCG as well. Either Wanted or Black Witch. I would... I don't know. Either, either one of them is kind of interchangeable. Uh, Snake Eyes Poplar, we just got this in the TCG at limited status. People thought that it really wouldn't make a difference if Ash and Snake Eyes Poplar, you know, got hit. And actually, it makes a pretty big difference because if you draw a Poplar, it is completely dead because you can basically never resolve its effect to special summon it. So it actually makes this card kind of a terrible brick to draw. Now, Phantom of You Bell, this one is also interesting. I did see some people calling this, and I think it's fair. Because, honestly, if you look at this card, I understand it's not a traditional boss monster in the sense that it doesn't have that overwhelming power or at least, like, the damage, the damage capability. But this card is absolutely nuts. The fact that you can make this card and it serves as not just a monster negation, but a monster negation that changes the effect of the card and sends itself to the graveyard as a cost, so it's almost impossible to stomp. This card in multiples is crazy, especially the fact that you can just summon it using cards from the graveyard. So a lot of times when you summon it, it just doesn't even require resources. Yeah, it can't be used as fusion material, but I've seen people overlay with this card. I've seen people link with it. This card at three is stupid in my opinion. You should be able to use one of them, maybe insulate your plays for Nibiru and stuff like that. But when you're using like two, three in a turn, that's a little stupid. Um, I know what... Tempai this is. I just don't know if it's Chunja or Fadra. It's like, what, what, three main deck Tempai monsters or something like this. I gotta be honest, I'm a little surprised to see this hit because Tempai already got their field spell hits. And it's, I mean, it, it in all honesty, it didn't really stop Tempai from like being played. <laughs> this is such an interesting deck because when a lot of people first looked at it, they were like, this deck is terrible. And this, this deck was wildly successful. Tempai was wildly successful um as a archetype like competitively even fanfare wise, uh, uh, wise but i'm a little surprised that konami kind of double dipped with uh the hitting of tempai because it's not like they got any new main deck monsters or or they that they're they're like second wave of support really only had like one card maybe two cards that you play so i don't think tempai is getting any more support but they are getting hit again we also have fiendsmith and this is interesting because I just, you wouldn't expect Fiendsmith to get hit so hard so early. Obviously, we know what happened in the OCG or TCG where they just banned Lacrima after a single format of being legal, which was easily the most shocking part of the last FNL. But to get two hits, and, and keep in mind, this is an archetype that is still going to be getting support in the future. We already know that we're getting what the girl, um, a Fiendsmith card, we're getting her. In the next set, so I would kind of expect maybe Fiendsmith to get some more support down the line. And um, yeah, Konami's hitting the Fiendsmith itself, and they're also hitting Fiendsmith track, which really is gonna hurt the consistency of this. You know, if your Fiendsmith gets ashed, or if you ash track, it's not a very high chance your opponent's going to have the other card to, you know, basically do the extension. But no extra deck hits, definitely no Lacrima hit. And then we have Bonfire. This, um, you know, obviously it's for like snake eyes, but actually is ironically hit to uh, Centurion just by, I don't know, it's kind of like a, um, um, I'm trying to think of uh, collateral damage. It's like collateral damage because Centurion plays this, but I mean, I would rather have Fiendsmith get hit itself than hit like the searcher card that other decks can technically play. Two semi-limited status. We have Eva. This card just got limited in the TCG. I think that uh, I never, I'm just being honest, I never understood the Eva hit. If you're afraid of Herald of Perfection, Drytron, I guess. I, I don't think that this card's going to stay at one in the, in the TCG very long. I think this card's going to three because it's only kind of playable on like one deck and Drytron's really not that good. Then we have Speedroy Terratop. This card is still very powerful, but it is kind of just moving in the other direction. So, you know, no real shock there. We have Pink. 
X Saber and um, MX Saber Invoker. On face value, this card is still kind of crazy, but um, I think it's just going to take like another deck to use this because in the past we did see Zodiac, you know, like a tier zero deck, and then we saw Goki as another like insane deck. We've seen multiple decks essentially use this card, abuse it. We see Luster Pendulum, which I mean, I you could have bet me all the money in the world. I would not have known that this card was still at limited status. Gold Sarcophagus, every time this card goes higher, there seems to be a deck that can really use this. I mean, we, we've had Thunder Dragons, uh, and for a little bit of time, people were playing it and flew Wanderees because it instantly banished the birds so that you can summon them and just kind of like start the, the combos off. Flu don't really play this card um, anymore, but it's, it's always like very played when it goes uh, higher. We have uh, Fusion Destiny, Branded Opening. Keep in mind that Branded Fusion is now at limited status, I think, in all three Yu-Gi-Oh's. And this one is interesting. Max C, Maximus CMS is now semi-limited. Now, for anyone who knows their Yu-Gi-Oh! history, the last time Konami put Max C at semi-limited semi in the OCG, the very next ban list, they immediately reverted it back to three. However, it was speculated since we're making all these Mocharmi cards that maybe those are supposed to be the replacement to Max C. And if you've seen the OCG, there are some people who are main decking, like between Maxi and Mocharmies, there are some people who are just like literally main decking nine copies of these cards, especially the Tempai decks that just want to go second anyways. They say, okay, go ahead, special all you want. We'll just shotgun Maxi, we'll shotgun Mocharmi. If you don't play, we'll just, we'll just OTK you with like a single card. And if you do play, we'll just draw 10 cards and we'll still OTK you. So it is interesting. And I wonder if the Mocharmies... You know, if the reason for the March Armies were to actually replace Maxi, I, th I think we'll probably know on our next FNL list because if Maxi goes to one in the OCG, that probably means that it's it the card is toast that it's going to get banned. Nightmare Throne, you know, second hit for you, Bell. I think throwing that too is, is like fine in the TCG. We, we went a little bit of a different route hitting some of the uh the um uh the the what are those things called the um uh like raviel the oh, i can't think of their names and then we have gozen match now this is interesting because there's no way in hell this card was at three i think this card made it may have been at one and going to two which is surprising because gozen match is still an incredibly powerful card and i just i wouldn't expect any of the floodgates to go higher on the fnl list like tc boo um skill drain i just i wouldn't expect rivalry i would not expect these cards to go higher on the fnl now when it comes to three you know dragon rulers sorry some of the most powerful cards of all time historically but you know basically power creep at this point you know still cool cards we have spiral quick fix uh performance plush fire this card should have never been eroded in my opinion if you want to play performances and use this card 10 times in a turn be my guest. We have uh, Double A Arsenal Zeus. I still think this card is more ban worthy than should be at three, but that's just my opinion. Magic Specter Kieran. Uh, this is fine. We have, oh, Purely. This is cool. I think Purely uh, getting his cards back is good for Yu Gi Oh! I actually think that Purely is like one of the more balanced archetypes we've gotten in like the last few years because every card kind of like requires you to discard a card to play but then the payoff of having noir with a bunch of spins being unaffected is like very high so i kind of like the design of purely as an archetype so happy to see purely get his cards back and then some mass removal cards so the ocg man list is is interesting and i mean i don't play ocg so i can't really say that i absolutely love it but you know, things like Maxi moving down, us getting some of these cards coming back, um, you know, like the Zodiac, uh, Dryadence, and Masterpiece to True Draco Sling King. I really hope that those come to the TCG. I also think that maybe we could see another Tempai hit. It is interesting, though, because that, that deck, I think it's called like Raziel or something, the, the new kind of like Mafeki deck. That deck is not quite tier zero on the OCG, but it's easily the best deck. So Konami probably going to have to go after that on the next FNL list. Anyways, whatever you guys thought, you leave it all in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching, as always.